In this video, we study databases. In particular, we want to know how databases with multiple tables can be organized. Let's start with an example table about movies. Some basic information is already in the table. But what if we want to know more about the movie, for instance, where the director of the movie was born? Or who are the actors of the movie? We can add the birthplace and birth year of every director in our movie table. But now we repeat a lot of information in this table. In particular, the birthplace and birth year of Mike Judge are there twice already in our small example table. Mike Judge's year and place of birth do not change with every movie he has made. Repeating this data introduces a few problems. First, we have to enter the right year and place of birth every time we add a new movie by Mike Judge. Second, if we realize later that we got the year wrong, we have to change it multiple times. Instead, we should have an entirely new table just for directors. This table stores all the director-specific data like their year and place of birth. If we want to know some details about a movie director, we simply look up that information in the specific director table by doing a name match. But what if a director's name is not unique? We have a problem if there is a second Olivia Wilde in our director table. In the movies table, we say that Olivia Wilde directed Book Smart, but in the director's table, we have two Olivia Wildes. So which Olivia directed Book Smart? We solve this by adding an ID column to the director's table and having a unique ID attached to each director. The younger Olivia Wilde has ID 1, the older Olivia Wilde has ID 5. Now we replace the director's name column in the movies table with the director's IDs. We then know that the director with ID 1 directed Booksmart. And there can be only one director with that ID in the director's table. Indeed, in databases, every table has a unique ID field. So also the movies table should have an ID field. That way we can differentiate between the many Robin Hood movies. These IDs are called keys. The unique ID associated with each row is called the primary key. Columns referring to primary keys of other tables are called foreign keys. Here, the director ID column in the movies table is a foreign key referring to the primary key of the director's table. Real databases have hundreds or thousands of tables. Eventually it will become a bit difficult to keep track of all these tables and how they relate to each other. An entity relationship diagram, or ER diagram for short, captures these entities and their relationships visually. Rectangles denote entities. We have already seen that we have movies and directors. Maybe we have actors too. Every entity has an ID field which is the primary key of that table. Other data attributes are shown in ellipses, like director names or movie titles. Diamonds are used to show relationships between entities. We have a relationship between movies and directors. And we have a relationship between movies and actors. These relationships could also have other data attributes. An actor plays a character in a movie, and that character usually has a name. Each relationship edge is annotated by either N or 1. The annotation N indicates that many entities can be involved in that relationship. Regarding the relationship for acting, both edges are annotated by N. This means that an actor can play in many movies, and a movie can also have many actors. The directing relationship has a 1 and an N edge. Here, every director can direct many movies. But every movie has at most one director. This is not really true in practice because some movies indeed have multiple directors, but in our database we insist on that, for educational reasons. Note that each entity in an ER diagram usually has its own table in the database. And many-to-many -many relationships such as acting usually also have their own table. For one-to-many -many relationships such as directing, this is not necessarily true. Here we can have a specific directing table, or we can also just write the director ID into the movies table, as we did before. To demonstrate many-to-many -many relationships, let us look into the acting table. The actors 11 and 17 have acted in the same movie 5. And the actor 43 has acted in the movies 3 and 27. So this relationship table indeed is many to many. Now that our data is spread across multiple tables, we need to understand how to query these multiple tables. As a running example, we look at the acting and movies tables. The movie ID is stored as a foreign key in the acting table. 
we have the acting table and the movies table here, and query for their collective data. Imagine simply merging the two tables together into one. For this we use the SQL keyword join. When we join two tables, we say how we join them, using the on keyword. Normally, we just make sure that the primary key in one table is the same as the foreign key in the other table, as shown here. Note that we cannot just write ID when we refer to the ID of movies, because acting also has a field ID. So we simply say movies.id. If we execute this SQL statement, we get the following result. The output contains all the characters with their names, in all the movies. You can see here how the join works. We got four lines of output, two lines for joining movie 5 on both sides, and two lines for movie 3 on both sides. Such a normal join is sometimes also known as an inner join. But what if there are movies in the movies table which have no corresponding roles in the acting table? Here, office space has no lines in the acting table. An inner join only selects data for which there is a match on both sides of the join clause. A right outer join selects all the data from the right side of the join clause. Data which can be matched will be matched like in the inner join. Data which cannot be matched will be presented as well, however only the part of the data which is in the right table. So the three movies with no actors will be shown exactly once, without character. A left outer join does exactly the same with the left table. So we get the same result as in the inner join, plus one more line for the character Richie Tenenbaum, without movie title. A full outer join will select all data from both tables. So we get four lines in the result of the green and blue inner joins, and four more lines for the red objects. More than two tables can be joined together on fields that are used to define their relationships. In this query, the movies table, the acting table, and the actors table are joined together. We can think of some interesting questions about our data. For example, what if we want to find all movie pairs which have a fictional character with the same name? Can you think of a query that does that? This is quite challenging, and you might need a minute. To solve this puzzle we need to join a table with itself. We use an as keyword to refer to a table in a unique way. And then we need a four-way join. Look at the yellow part of the query. Here we have the table movies twice, and the table acting twice. We refer to these tables as M1, M2, A1, and A2. Now look at the last part of the query. As before, we join movies with acting on the movie ID in order to get a movie name together with a character name. Then we make sure that the two acting characters need to have the same name. We simply demand that a1.character is the same as a2.character. And finally we make sure that the two movies are not the same by demanding that m1.id is not the same as m2.id. Then we output the two movie titles and the character name. Since the character name is the same in A1 and A2, we simply output A1.character. While the query essentially does what it should, there is still one thing we can improve. Can you figure it out? In our previous query, every pair of movies would be printed twice. If we only want to print every pair once, we should not only test whether the two movie IDs are different, but instead that one movie ID is strictly smaller than the other. This way we only get a pair once. In this video, we discussed how to deal with databases that consist of multiple tables. First, we motivated why multiple tables are better, then we introduced the concepts of primary key and foreign key. Then we talked about ER diagrams. In the second part of the video we studied how to query multiple tables by using joins, and we discussed the different types of joins. Thanks for watching this video.